And now for the AFT perspective, a session produced by our underwriter, and for that I am delighted to welcome AFT President Randy Weingarten. And joining Randy are Carla Hernandez Matz, the President of the United Teachers of Dade, and Anna Fusco, the President of the Broward Teachers Union. Randy? And we're, we're going to do, you know, um, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not standing at the podium, but I'm also going to ask um, a seventh, uh, a high school science teacher who you've seen oh, before you, on this panel to come thank up you. as well. Why don't we just move over a little bit so that uh, Superintendent Carvello can come up for a few minutes because this is what I'm going to do. Um, you know, the AFT is actually producing these panels and we've tried to have a balance. I could have actually had a debate with the gentleman who just spoke about charters, but frankly, I'd rather do this. I'm a high school social studies teacher from Claire Barton, New York. Now, New York's loss is Miami's gain right now. <laughs> um, from Claire Barton High School in Crown Heights, New York. Carla is a special needs middle school and science teacher. Yes, she's also the head of the Miami-Dade um, Federation of Teachers. Anna Fusco is a fifth grade elementary school teacher. Superintendent Carvello is a, is a high school science teacher. All of us start from the perspective of that craft, of loving kids, of wanting to teach, of wanting to do what everybody talked about beforehand, about building relationships, about creating excellence and equity, about burning with the desire to make all of our kids help them seize whatever opportunities they can seize, help them live to their God-given potential. And what has happened in Florida is that over the past 20 years, we have seen actually the amount of funding go down so that the, 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 the kind of choices that have to be made, we've seen it and talked about it in different meetings all day today. Guidance counselors, psychologists, social workers are actually assessing testing now as opposed to even the ones that are there right now doing the work we talked about before. Between two, tw 2018 and 2015, real per pupil funding declined by 22% in Florida. The state has the second worst track record in all states on this. Teacher salaries are about $5,000 below what is the mean around the country, and the mean below the country is pretty bad. In fact, that is why the West Virginia teachers and um, bus drivers and others have been on strike for eight days. The, the, the point I'm trying to make, and, and Precious made it, made it earlier as well, is that as the world is changing, as we have to do everything that the mayor just talked about, as we have to do project-based learning and debate preparation and wraparound services, as we have to confront all the issues, including mm. the issues of safety in schools, all this funding is going down. And I really wanted these folks to talk in their roles of frontline educators. They have been frontline first responders to children's needs. And unfortunately, today, as we are talking about arm us with resources, arm us with guidance counselors, arm us with materials, let me teach debate. Let us have those CTE programs, the AP programs that I love to teach. What Tallahassee did today was they armed us with guns at the same exact time as they stripped teachers from the entire state of their voice, of their contracts, and of fairness, as we are talking now. And so I just really wanted the three of them to actually have a minute to talk about what it's like. So, so, so Mr. Superintendent, if, if, if you had a, sh a chance just to either talk to President Trump or Governor Scott right now, and you thought he was listening, and you thought either one of them were listening, what would you say? 
Well, to President Trump, I hope there's a statute of limitation on deportation for being <laughs> somebody like me. Um, uh, you know, all kidding aside, so many people are saying so much about education that they actually believe they taught a kid by doing so. And absent is often the voice of teachers, the voice of students, the voice of people, as you said so wisely, that once a teacher, always a teacher. The voice of Larry Feldman, Maritera Rojas, Marta Perez were here earlier, Dr. Padron. Once a teacher, always a teacher. And uh, we sort of forget that, that it is those, first and foremost, who live and practice education that know education. And for whatever reason in this country, we often listen to the wise advice of the doctor, of the engineer, of the architect, even the plumber. But we allow others who have no formal training in education, never sat across from a kid to teach him or her, but they have such strong opinions on how to best do it. And at some point, we need to change that. We need to have the courage to say, we do what we do because we love it and because we're trained to do it. We love it, but the love alone isn't sufficient. We are trained to do it. Let us practice our craft. Let us create the magic we believe we can create. Um, that's not going to stop uh, certain individuals from advocating things that, in many instances, don't make sense. That's why I repeat what I said earlier. You know, the power of democracy at work. People standing up, showing up, speaking up is the only thing that works. And I hope that soon we begin to see that more and more. Silence is acquiescing to policies that sometimes don't help kids. Thank you. So and I, I know the superintendent has to leave, so if he leaves, don't, don't say anything negative about him because he's staying in Miami. Thank you. So, so I'd like to add yeah. to something. Good. And um, then as, as Carla adds, and then I'm going to go to, um, to Anna, but I also want to just say that this lady over here and I got arrested on behalf of the Dreamers a couple of weeks ago, just fighting, fighting for our kids, being out there as the voices for our kids to keep our kids here and not letting them get deported. And I'm not sure that I wanted to be arrested with anybody but you, Carla. Awesome. <laughs> Carla Metz. Well, I mean, what I wanted to add uh, to the conversation is I agree with the superintendent in that we cannot be silent. But at the same time, you know, let's talk and let's, uh, you know, agree that people are not being silent right now. I mean, we have children that are really teaching us, uh, you know, just profound lessons right now as they're speaking up. Uh, we have teachers that have, you know, been outraged by the things that our legislature is trying to pass. And still, time and time again, we see the same type of reaction. They are not listening to us, and they are doing what their will is. Uh, teachers have said they do not want to be armed. They're still putting provisions in state le uh, legislature to arm them. Uh, and, and they're trying to silence us now. So I want to talk about, or I want to address the fact that not only is this, um, you know, widespread demoralization, but it is disrespectful to a predominantly female workforce. They are trying to say, let's take away their rights, let's silence women, let's not give them rights, let's tell them what they must do, and then let's underfund and dismantle public education. And that's wrong, but that's the state that we live in. Right. And, and, and I want to just get to, because we will have one question about what we do about these things, but I do, I want to get to Anna. Um, Broward school system is a big school system and I think Anna has probably been to virtually every single school in that system and I, she and I were at West Glades today which is the school next door to Stoneman Douglas and then she was also afterwards at, at Douglas but I have talked to this lady pretty much every day since the massacre and as someone who was up in Sandy Hook afterwards and someone who has witnessed some of these terrible 238 gun incidents in schools since Sandy Hook. But 
the teachers who shielded kids, who saw what happened, who are there now, the kids who you have all heard about and who are inspiring us all. Anna, every single day since 2.14, we'll never be able to say Valentine's Day again, mm. since 2.14, has kind of been living it. And so how are you? And how, and, and, and what, are, what, what, what are you hearing and feeling and, and, and seeing from the teachers and from the kids? Oh, me personally, I mean, I'm fine. I'm strong. And I'll tell you what's driving me. To hear that they want to take our voices away and silence us, for our students and our teachers that were at ground zero and went through that tragedy, and for our students to come out like a bat out of hell, to speak their mind, to demand what they want, has, I believe, empowered all of us adults that we were once that vibrant and we kind of forgotten because we got settled. But yet they're out there showing us and I'm watching adults join in this crusade and that's why I know that it's gonna keep going. There's a fire lit under those kids and they're passing that light on to all of us that we have no choice but to join them because those kids, they're our kids. Our kids were in that school. Somebody you know, their kids were in that school or the school next door. And our teachers, they are showing up every day since the tragedy to be there for their students. And they're incredible. They were affected just like most of those kids in that school that were in that 1200 building. And a lot of them say that I don't know if I can do it. I'm not sure if I can do it. But they're also moving forward saying, I need to do it because our kids need us. Uh, aside from knowing that our teachers are going to protect their students, we've seen it in every single school shooting. Our teachers die for our kids. And they think that arming us is going to make us better shields for them, that we're going to protect them better. They're nuts. They completely lost their minds to think that that is going to change us or make us better protectors of our students. Just by our teachers, our coaches, our security specialists, whatever educator in that building, besides hiding them and protecting them, shoving their kids under the desk, shoving them in a closet, holding doors because they knew the lock wasn't locked right, that's a protector, not a gun. For damn sure, not a gun. And I have to tell you, Besides being sick to my stomach over it, I'm angry about it because I've not met anybody, and especially our kids, that I walk the halls with in the Capitol two days after the incident because they wanted the, the senators and the representatives to hear them. Please, they're begging. Can you imagine? They just watched their friends slaughtered. They just watched their teacher killed, and they're sitting there begging. Please help us take these guns away. What do they go and do? They go and put more guns in people's hands, that that's the answer. So they really showed that goods and money are over people, our children, our future. That by the way, I know damn well that they're going to supersede, they're going to grow, they're going to become these intelligent adults, and they're going to vote these suckers out. That's what I know is going to happen. And I apologize for some of the non-filtering. <laughs> See, we're not shy in our opinions, <laughs> which is part of the reason why uh, Tallahassee, those who are in power in Tallahassee, want to shut us up. And sometimes people don't agree with our opinions. But at the end of the day, as Superintendent Carvalho said, democracy and public education go hand in hand. And what we are trying to do is we are, just, we are trying to grow kids so that they seize this democracy from us and they make it a heck of a lot better. So I want to ask the three of you, before we go off the stage, since I see I have one minute and four seconds left, um, I want to say, if we could do one thing this year, one thing this year, what is it that when you go back to offices and schools starting tomorrow is going to be your focus for the next few months. Carla. November elections. 
November elections. Absolutely. We have to re-energize the community. We have to let Tell them know. Tell people what, yeah. Absolutely. We have to let everyone know what they are voting on or not voting for um, and empower our community to know the issues and vote for people that re truly represent them. Okay. My focus is definitely going to be for the, since we're still basically at ground zero in Broward County, Florida, is to um, understand the needs and the wants of our teachers and all of our educators in our schools and our students, except them being forced upon of what, what everybody thinks they need. I think it's really, really important that people understand what is needed and get them you know, get the pieces back together. It's, it's going to take so much time, but we need to really start listening and caring and being genuine instead of assuming, instead of making suggestions for them. And I think that they really need people that are going to be there just for them and bring in what they need and what they want and not what we think they need and want. And unfortunately, that's what our, our Tallahassee crew did. They act like that they heard our voices and they just appeased and said, oh, I did my job. And they moved on and they did whatever they wanted. They didn't listen to those students. They certainly didn't listen to us. And as superintendent said that, it seems like we didn't do too well on educating the ones that sit up in those seats. But I could tell you right now, we're seeing that we sure did a damn good job educating these kids coming up. And that's going to be the turnaround. Superintendent. Look, I think a lot has been said. I, you know, my commitment is to empower the voice of teachers, protect the resolve of our students, ensure democracy that's worked for us continues to work for all, and our democ democracy is protected by the foundation of public education. As I said, one indispensable to the other. Allow a fracture on one, and you'll pay dividends. They are caustic and punitive. In a society that we hope to protect, the society where we hope to raise our kids. It is that important as we do it, as we do it. It is for all, not just for some. It is for the native born, the immigrant. It is for the black, for the brown, for the rich, for the poor. It is for he who loves she, for he who loves he, and everything else in between. That is the promise of America. That is the promise of public education. So we are going to work on ensuring that schools are safe and welcoming and hold everybody accountable to make sure that happens because that will be the foundation of our democracy. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.